Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the big news of the day. The topic for today is the GSAT 7B satellite, which is going to be built by ISRO as a dedicated military satellite for the Indian Army. So, in this short and crisp analysis, let us analyze the GSAT 7 series of satellites along with having a discussion on India's other military satellites. So if you're finding our new initiative to be helpful, do let us know by liking the video, by sharing your comments, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. First, let's understand why this topic is in news. See, last week on the 22nd of March, the Defense Acquisition Council, headed by the Defense Minister of India, met and has given the acceptance of necessity for capital acquisition proposals amounting to more than 8,000 crore rupees for the Indian Armed Forces. Amongst these proposals which were approved by the Defence Acquisition Council, the most important procurement has to be the launch of the GSAT-7B satellite, which would be a dedicated military satellite for the Indian Army. So this gives us an opportunity to talk about the GSAT-7 series of satellites, which are dedicated military satellites being built and launched by ISRO. See, the GSAT-7 series of satellites are advanced state-of-the-art communication satellites that have been indigenously designed, built and developed by Indian Space Research Organization. These series of satellites, they specifically meet the communication requirements of the Indian Armed Forces. And the first satellite in the series, that is the GSAT-7, was launched back in 2013 from the equatorial space station of Kourou in French Guyana with the help of Aryan launch vehicle which is owned by the European Space Agency Aryan Space. For launching the GSAT-7 series of satellites, equatorial space stations are preferred as these satellites are injected into geosynchronous transfer orbit which later helps these satellites maintain a geostationary position over its primary focus area which is India and the region beyond it. This satellite weighing nearly 2.6 tons provides for constant real-time coverage of nearly 2,000 nautical miles of area around the Indian Ocean region. The first satellite in the series, that is the GSAT-7, which was launched in 2013, was primarily meant for the Indian Navy in order to fulfill its communication needs and to enable the Indian Navy to become a true blue water navy. Such a dedicated communication satellite for the Navy will enable the armed force to establish a network-centric warfare environment by providing for high-speed, secure and real-time communication between various naval assets including command control stations, surface ships, submarines, aircrafts and drones. The first satellite in this series, the GSAT-7, has also been named as Rukmini and it carries payloads in the ultra-high frequency C-band and Q-band and provides for low bit voice rate to high bit trade data facilities and communication systems. So under this series, the GSAT-7B is going to be developed and it will be launched in the coming months as a dedicated communication satellite for the Indian Army. See, currently, the Indian Army doesn't have a dedicated communication military satellite. As of now, it is depending on the GSAT-7A, which is another satellite in the same series, which is a dedicated communication satellite for the Indian Air Force. Currently, the Army is using nearly 30% of this bandwidth from the GSAT-7A satellite, which is meant for the Indian Air Force. So, in order to provide for a dedicated military communication satellite for the Indian Army, the GSAT-7B is being built and launched, which will enhance the secure communication and surveillance capabilities of the Indian Army by allowing it to establish a network-centric warfare environment. See, today, modern armed forces depend on network-centric warfare environment to interconnect all their systems, assets and weapon platforms. In such a network-centric warfare environment, all key military assets are interlinked, including soldiers on the ground, aircrafts and drones in the air, fighter jets, command and control facilities, and as well as ships and submarines. The Indian Navy and the Indian Air Force have already established such a network-centric warfare environment 
with the help of GSAT-7 and GSAT-7A satellites respectively. So the GSAT-7B would help the Indian Army to achieve the same network-centric warfare environment by establishing secure and safe communication systems between the command and control ground stations and all the key assets of the Indian Army, including its battle tanks, helicopters and drones, and as well as with its soldiers and special forces who operate on the ground. Such reliable, secure and real-time connectivity between all the assets will enable better coordination and it will also enable interconnectivity between the Indian Army and the Navy and the Air Force. In fact, all the three armed forces are looking to switch towards software-defined radios by procuring new sophisticated radio communication systems which will rely on such satellite-based communications. For example, if you look at GSAT-7A, which was launched in 2018, it has not only enabled the Indian Air Force to establish a network-centric warfare environment, but it has also boosted connectivity between the ground radar stations, the air bases, and airborne early warning and control systems, along with the fighter jets and other assets of the Indian Air Force. This satellite, dedicated for the Indian Air Force, has also been named as the Angry Bird and has enabled the Indian Air Force to provide for satellite-enabled control and operations of UAVs or drones, which happens to be a more reliable way of operating drones as compared to ground-controlled operations. Currently, the Indian Air Force and the Indian Navy are moving ahead and they are looking to replace the GSAT-7 for the Navy with a new satellite, the GSAT-7R, as the lifespan of GSAT-7 is about to expire in two years. The Indian Air Force is also looking to replace its Angry Bird or the GSAT-7A with a new communication satellite, the GSAT-7C, which has been recently approved by the Defense Acquisition Council. So this only left the Indian Army behind with regard to military communication satellites and hence the Defense Acquisition Council has approved a dedicated military communication satellite for the Indian Army as well. So very soon, the GSAT-7B will join the list of other Indian military satellites and will primarily enable faster and secure communications for all the branches of the Indian Army. So now, let me take you through some of the other important military satellites of India as well. In 2020, ISRO launched the MESAT or the Electromagnetic Intelligence Gathering Satellite, which carries an electronic intelligence package as its payload, named as Kautilya. This satellite has been specifically built for intercepting ground-based radars of the enemy countries and to carry out electronic surveillance across India and as well as in and around India. This electronic intelligence payload provides the capability to track the directions of enemy radars and also to identify their specific locations, which will help all the three armed forces to plan their operations accordingly against any adversary state of India that is present in and around India's immediate neighborhood. This electromagnetic intelligence gathering satellite or MISAT has been placed in a low earth orbit and the technology behind it is said to be based on an Israeli satellite system. This satellite has been placed in a polar orbit and is said to be extremely efficient in gathering electronic intelligence about radars and its locations in and around India. Then we also have the RISART series of satellites which are specifically meant for Earth observation and it carries a unique payload known as the Synthetic Aperture Radar. This is essentially a high resolution imaging satellite that can capture very high resolution images of target areas and can be very useful in border surveillance and in tracking enemy troop movement. The uniqueness of synthetic aperture radar is that it can capture high resolution images even during night time and even when there is dense cloud cover on the ground. Synthetic aperture radar based imaging is said to be more efficient than optical imaging and this is a technology that ISRO jointly developed with its Israeli counterpart. The first research satellite was launched as a joint initiative between India and Israel. And now India has put in place an entire series of research satellites which provide very high resolution imaging capabilities for the Indian Armed Forces. 
the RISAT satellites are also extensively used by India's intelligence agencies and as well as by other security and border guarding forces. Such high resolution imaging satellites can also serve a civilian application, especially during disasters, and they can play a key role in search and rescue operations. While RISAT is a dedicated military imaging satellite, we also have other civilian high resolution imaging satellites like CARTOSAT which could also be employed for a military purpose if required. So with this, I would like to conclude today's session and I hope it provided a good insight into India's military satellites. So if you found this video to be helpful, do let us know in the comment section and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.